This Minecraft server has been corrupted with exploits since day one. Exploits that can literally freeze time, duplicate infinite items, and crash the server as many times as you want. And ever since I involved myself in the creation of one of these glitches, I've made it my mission to wipe all exploits off this server, with the hopes of one day living in an exploit-free world. However, all of the exploits I just mentioned pale in comparison to what was about to be unveiled. But first, I need to talk about my little guy. This is my U2s. He is a nine inch sphere. He's got a nice little crown, cute little smile, adorable little guy. And essentially, I'm going to be selling him to you. Yeah, by some miracle, I managed to get myself a U2s. I have no idea how that happened. But if you'd like to get one, you can enter a giveaway that I'm going to be doing. You can do all the things on the screen in order to enter. And also, you can just buy him if you want on the 16th of April at 3 p.m. EST. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Okay back to the Minecraft bye. And it all started with a battle against my biggest enemy, Maybik. Between him and his teammate, Rochambeau, he was the player I wanted to kill the most. And that's because despite how long the two of us have been fighting each other, I have never been able to kill Maybik. And this fight was my perfect opportunity, since Maybik wanted to fight me completely by himself, something he hasn't done for a few months now. And despite Maybik's 10 heart advantage, I had managed to break his boots and pop his totem twice. And just as I was about to kill him, I was suddenly attacked by a warden. A warden that killed me in a singular hit, which was pretty shocking considering wardens don't typically do that. And with this came a lot of questions. Why was this warden able to one-shot me? Where did this warden come from? And most importantly, who did this warden belong to? Was this some kind of trap that Maypick had set up? Or was this something far deeper? Regardless, all of these questions would remain unanswered. But whatever this was, I needed to get to the bottom of it. My goal has always been to put an end to Maypick and Rochambeau's rulership. But if one-shot wardens are going to be popping up around the server, then maybe it was time I realigned my goals. A few days later, I found myself at an auction held by the Leviathan, the group of players that ruled the server. And this event would be the perfect opportunity to see if they were up to anything out of the ordinary. But after 30 minutes of them just auctioning off items that they got from killing other players, nothing strange or interesting was happening at all. It seemed like this was just some regular auction, meaning today was just a massive waste of my time. Until I saw him. An Endermite with the exact same particles as the warden that killed me. And what do you know, it was running around at mock speed and popping the totem of every single player that it touched. Everybody that was at the auction was immediately distracted by this Endermite. And after we shot it a couple times, we found out it was immortal. Which brought me to the conclusion that there's no way this creature should exist. As far as I'm aware, there's no way to make an Endermite immortal or able to one-shot a player in survival Minecraft, meaning whatever this was had to be created by somebody with creative mode, or at least something like that, which is just crazy. This whole thing was a lot bigger than I anticipated and had the ability to lead to the end of the world as we know it. However, before I could even begin stressing out over this, my enemy is the Leviathan decided to take advantage of everybody's lack of awareness and start attacking ah! me. Why? Maybe it's jumping me. Maybe it's jumping, jumping me. Maybe it's jumping me. We cannot have one day at spawn, huh? He's in the water. I get Sorry, Red. I got you, fam. We stay alive. Oh, shoot. Ruby's on us. Due to the ferocious Endermite going around trying to murder everybody, all the players involved in the fight had no choice but to flee the battlefield. This led to my teammates chasing down the Leviathan across the entire server. And after a lot of chasing, my teammates all found each other while chasing down Parrot. While I, on the other hand, was about to engage in a 2v1 against Mapic and Rochambeau. And unfortunately, there was absolutely nobody around to help me. I was completely alone against against my two biggest enemies on the server. And to be honest, I couldn't have asked for a better situation. The three of us had been in this exact same situation before. And the last time that we fought here, I ended up losing miserably. But this time around, I wasn't going to let that happen. I wasn't going to be pushed around by my former teammates any longer. I wasn't going to let them rule over this server anymore. I was going to put a stop to Maypeak and Rochambeau's reign over everybody once and for all. And I was going to do so by killing them right here, right now. It's a 2v1 against Ro and Maypeak again. But this time I win! This time I win! Yeah, this is your moment, go. Got this. Parrot is literally just baiting so they can try and kill them. That is 100% what this is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotta yeah, go back. All of you on him. Alright, Sam, where you at? They almost got me. Oh my god, that was bad. This is on the Japanese village, right, Zoom? Uh, yeah. By the Techno statue now. 
I can hold it, dog. Don't worry. It's crazy how the people who are on the server are like all at 20 hearts and just got like 30. Okay. So Guys. Inside by the back of Sake. Oh, oh, oh. Red, yes! <laughs> how are you Let's doing? Go. I'm with Mapix still. Right. You had the option to take the 1v1. Now fight back! They're going to a portal. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Can you even take the 1v or 2v2? Hi, dog. Oh, hello. Bro's oh. boots broke! He broke his boots broke, oh my god. Yo, we got him red. We got him. We got him red. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! We had taken down Rochambeau, but unfortunately, maybe could still manage to get away. However, despite that, I was still determined to find him and kill him. I wasn't going to let Mapic get away after everything that he's done to me. So after receiving the heart that we just stole from Rochambeau, I decided to head to the nether roof and begin searching for Mapic. And within just a couple of minutes, I had managed to find him. This was it. My perfect opportunity to finally kill Mapic. I could finally get my revenge for everything that he's done to me for the past few months. For all of the time where he's killed me using unfair advantages, I finally had the opportunity to pay him back for all of it. And I wasn't going to waste my chance. Okay. Let's go. I don't wanna. Oh, well, sorry. Slash NF. Dog, are you really about to crystal yourself? Nah. I would rather crystal himself than take the prince damn death. Come on. What? Oh, he like tried to rocket pearl. I see. That's really smart. <laughs> Bro. Oh, man. He did not make that very fun, but okay. Wow. Defeating Mapic here was unbelievably underwhelming. After everything Mapic had put me through, I was nowhere near satisfied with my revenge. However, after this battle, I went back to spawn in order to investigate the Endermite, and to my surprise, it had disappeared completely. Because of my battle with Mapic and Rochambeau, I lost my opportunity to investigate the Endermite. I could have found out so much more about this creature, and all of that down the drain because I was trying to get my revenge. It was at this moment that I realized I needed to make a decision. Either I continued trying to get my revenge on Mapic, or I continued unraveling the secrets behind these monsters. And ultimately, I went with the second option. I've been trying to get revenge on Mapic for months now, and since I haven't been able to succeed even once at killing him, it's probably about time that I just give it up and move on. So, unless Mapic and Rochambeau were the people behind summoning these creatures, I wasn't going to be concerned with them whatsoever. So, I decided to focus all of my attention on figuring out which player was behind creating these monsters and doing whatever I could to get rid of them. So I began joining as many calls as I could in hopes of finding some new information, and throughout every single call, the one-shot mobs weren't really mentioned by anybody. However, despite my intentions never getting revealed in any of these calls, it seemed as if the player I was looking for was already onto me, since just a few days after my search began, I ended up running into a familiar face. I'd say try it for the experience, it's just not worth- I heard a word. Wait, what? Oh. Yo, no f***ing way. Ah! Ah! Oh, there's a warden! What? What? <laughs> the warden that killed me during my fight with Mapic was brought to spawn. And this wasn't just for no reason, it was brought here to kill me. Which was made unbelievably obvious based on the fact that before this, I was practically begged to come to spawn for a special surprise. Leading me to believe that one of the players involved in this situation was the person who made these mobs in the first place. And after some careful consideration, as well as examining all my footage, I finally had myself a prime suspect. The player that I believe to be behind all of this was none other than Spoke. Not only because he has a history of exploiting on the server, but also because he's been involved in both incidents where the warden appeared. And since the two of us worked together to duplicate a bunch of items in the past, I knew how Spoke worked and that he was no stranger to cheating on the server. And with all of this, I was 100% certain that I needed to be investigating Spoke. However, before I was able to do any of that, my teammates called me for a meeting. Now, this wasn't super out of the ordinary since my teammates and I were always super close. Subs and Vitality are the only people on the server that I fully trust. However, I could tell something about this meeting was a little different. And I knew that was the case when Vitality said this. Yeah, I'm deafened for one second. Oh, okay. Vitality wanted me to deafen so him and subs could talk in private, which really scared me. What could they possibly be talking about without me? I thought this was a team meeting. We're supposed to talk together. And then I started thinking and began making some connections that I didn't like. During some random conflict a long time ago, Spoke ended up falling into the void. However, he never ended up dying, and that's because Vitality saved him. And since Vitality was one of the only people I told my plan to, and also happened to have previously worked with Spoke, it was totally 
possible that Vitalis told Spoke about my plan to go after him. That would explain why Spoke brought that warden to spawn in order to kill me. Because my teammates were working with him and leaked my plan to him. And if my teammates were working with Spoke, then that could mean that this entire meeting was just some big setup, where Spoke could have me killed and then be waiting at my bed in order to farm me off the server, thus banning and silencing me all in one move. And as soon as I put this all together, I immediately slept in a bed and then broke it. That way, I'd respawn at the server spawn as opposed to my bed, and avoid getting bed trapped and farmed off the server, hopefully giving me a chance at future survival in case I died here. Eventually, Vitalisly asked me to undeafen, and our conversation went as follows. You, you know how we went and destroyed all of the portals, and you did that with us without even questioning why? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I questioned it a little bit, but I mean, in the end, I trusted you guys, right? So, And we appreciate that greatly. Thanks. So, it's time you know the real reason. Subs and I. What the hell? Oh, we made it. We made a bit of a farm in the end, which is why no one else could have access. Oh. So I think it's time we make Minecraft's first bedrock prison. This meeting wasn't actually anything malicious. My teammates weren't going to kill me. Vitalis simply just wanted to show me what his next project was. He was just gonna use a bedrock farm in order to make a bedrock prison and then trap people inside of it. However, to be perfectly honest, I didn't like this idea at all. A lot of you may know this already, but I'm strictly against the use of exploits. It's one of the main reasons I want to get rid of these one-shot mobs, because their existence is most likely tied to some form of exploit or bug, and therefore it shouldn't exist on the server. It makes things unfair and I hated that. I felt the exact same way about Vitalisy using Bedrock, but at the same time, he was my teammate, so I wasn't really sure what to say. So I decided to keep all of this to myself for now, and instead just focus on taking down the one-shot monsters. I got my next lead from a player named Planet Lord, who invited me to play a game at spawn called Planet Playtime. However, when I got there, it seemed as if Planet wasn't the only player involved. <laughs> Welcome oh, to Planet so Playtime! My name is um, Spoke is here, and I am the, the host of Planet Playtime! The game was very simple. Basically, I had to run through this weird maze and avoid getting tagged by Planet Lord. However, after using F3A, I realized that the person tagging me wasn't going to be Planet Lord. It was going to be the Endermite from earlier. But the Endermite wasn't the only thing I found at spawn. There were also three whole Elder Guards guardians hidden beneath the maze. I don't know if you guys have any idea how hard it is to move an elder guardian, let alone three of them, but that's definitely not something you'd casually do just so that you can make this silly little maze game to kill Prince Zam. As for the maze itself, it kind of went as you'd expect. Oh god! I'm so screwed. I'm so screwed. Dear god! Oh god, oh god, oh god! Oh, oh, survived! <laughs> but nevertheless, the implications here are that Spoke has access to spawn eggs. And as far as I'm aware, there's no way you can get spawn eggs in just plain survival Minecraft. Meaning that Spoke probably had access to a whole creative menu. Just like that, everything began to make sense. But once again, before I could do any further investigating, I was interrupted, this time by Planet Lord. He said that he had something we needed to talk about immediately. And at first, I thought this was about Spoke. But it it was actually about my teammates. Do you know what your teammates have been up to? Kind of. Kind of? Like, how much do you know? Enough, I feel like, right? I know something about them, and um, I feel like I'm wondering if you know about it. Just a bedrock prison, right? Yeah, they're making, like, this big bedrock prison or whatever. Okay. Where'd yeah. the bedrock come from? Uh, the, the end. end. The end. Okay. Yeah. Sam, you know what? I hate to say it, but, um... Your teammates are lying to you a little bit. I wasn't entirely sure if I could trust Planet, but after a second conversation where he said a lot of the same things, I believed him and decided I needed to confront my teammates. From how everything's been going, it feels like there's some big secret that everybody on the server knows about except for me. And no matter how much I keep trying to dig for answers, more and more questions just keep popping up. I wanted answers. I wanted the full picture. I wanted to know what was going on. So I wrote down every single question that I had and was going to ask all of them 
to my teammates. It was a lot of stuff like, what are you guys potentially hiding from me? Or what do you guys know about what's been going on around the server? Specifically, about players potentially having creative mode. But during the meeting, I ended up getting hit with a lot of stage fright and just kind of kept going like this. Mm, okay, 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 okay. I feel like a part of it is Saint Asylum. Eventually, I mustered up the courage to ask my first question. I wanted to know what my teammates were hiding from me. And in response, Vitalisy revealed that he had a book of his own. A book that contained every single secret about this server. But in order to see it, the two of us would need to travel to one of our old bases. So we began making our way through the netherite mines. And eventually, buried deep beneath Vitalisy's old room, the two of us had found ourselves at his journal. The book was 100 pages long, but Vitalisy said I was only allowed to read up until page 30. And as I started to read these pages, my entire world was slowly flipped upside down. It all started with Vitalisy trying to find some kind of exploit. An exploit that would allow him to uphold peace and balance on the server. And eventually, he found a way to fly. Exactly like creative mode within survival Minecraft. I couldn't do it alone, so I contacted Spoke, one of the best exploiters I knew. With Spoke's help, we were able to amplify the glitch even further. After all of that, Vitalisy went on to explain his plan for taking down Leviathan. Phase I will remove access to the end dimension so that phases 2 and 3 can function without fault. Phase 2, after I have complete control over access to the end, I will then make a bedrock farm. Then I will execute the plan from the beginning of the book, a warden prison. Phase 3, Subs and I can fly, we will uphold the prison and defend it with our lives. After reading everything inside of the book, I had no idea how to feel. On one hand, Vitalisy had trusted me enough in order to share his plans with me, but on the other hand, he was planning on using exploits in order to imprison Mapic and Rochambeau. And despite everything that they've done against me, I'd already made a vow to never stoop to their level and use exploits against them. On top of this, Vitalisy never explained how the one-shot mobs ever ended up existing, so I asked him about it, and this was all that he would say. Well, I told you about the amplifications of the glitch, right? You got the glitch to become even more powerful, thanks to Spoke. Is that what that was? He figured out how to make the mobs? He figured out, yeah. This answer really rubbed me the wrong way, because it seemed like Vitalisy was still trying to keep me in the dark. I had no idea if they had creative mode or not, and I still wasn't even sure what kind of exploit this was. I mean, flying and summoning mobs that have infinite power are very different things. And if creative mode isn't involved, then how does any of it work? I was so confused and just really upset about this whole situation. It felt like the most cruel twist of fate ever. How did I, the person who hated exploits the most out of anybody on the server, end up on the team with the most powerful exploits? I had no idea what to do. And to make things worse, Vitalisy wanted to start working on his bedrock prison immediately. So the three of us gathered for yet another meeting and Vitalisy began explaining his plan. But while he was doing that, in the back of my mind, I was panicking. The last time I had teammates who did something that I didn't agree with, I ended up betraying betraying them and it ended miserably for everyone involved. And I didn't want the same thing to happen here, so I decided I was going to speak my mind. I was going to tell Vitalisy that I didn't like this idea and that I didn't want to do this. And surprisingly, he understood where I was coming from. He decided he'd make the prison weaker by not including the wardens that he initially wanted to add, but that wasn't where the problem was. The problem was within the fact that he was using bedrock to begin with. I didn't think it was okay for us to use a block that was unbreakable. It was completely unfair to the other players and I hated that. But Vitalisy was dead set on using Bedrock, and neither of us wanted to change our minds. Eventually, I started to second-guess myself. I was wondering if what I was expecting was even fair. Vitalisy had trusted me enough to share his plan with me, but I, on the other hand, wasn't trusting him enough to actually go through with it. And a big part of me felt selfish for even stopping him, so I decided to give in and let him build the prison. I gave him the green light, and the three of us traveled to spawn and built a prison out of Bedrock. But when I woke up in the morning, I immediately regretted my decision. I thought that if I let Vitalisy build the bedrock prison, eventually I'd have gotten over my distaste for exploits. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And the fact that every single player on the server had a problem with the prison definitely didn't help its case. I felt sort of hopeless and kind of had no idea what to do. I mean, I couldn't exactly just up and leave. I owe my entire existence to this team. When I ended up joining, I was on two hearts and had just been nearly banned by my former teammates. Subs let me in and without him, I wouldn't even be here. But at the same 
same time, I began questioning my placement in this team. I started thinking a lot about fate and destiny. Back when Vitalisy originally showed me the book, he said that I was the team's anchor, and that I was supposed to keep them grounded if they ever went too far with the exploits. And for a while, I believed that that was my fate, that that was the reason why the biggest anti-exploiter ended up on the exploiter's team. But when I tried to fulfill my role as the anchor, Vitalisy didn't listen to me. We went back and forth for two days on whether or not he should build the prison, which led to me cracking and letting him just go through with it. And if Vitalisy wasn't going to listen to me, then maybe I was never meant to be the anchor. Maybe I was never meant to be a part of this team. And after all, subs kind of did just add me on a whim. Maybe I was never meant to be here, which left me at the question, where was I fated to end up? It was at this point where I was approached by Bacon Waffles and Planet Lord. They wanted to know what my thoughts were on the Bedrock prison, since in the past, I've always been anti-exploits, but now was on the team that placed Bedrock at spawn. So I explained all of my worries to them, and that's when they offered me to join them in taking down the exploiters. However, I told Bacon that I'd never do that unless I somehow knew that subs in Vitality were going to do something that would destroy the server. And that's when I got my idea. If I wanted to know if I could trust my teammates, I should just read the rest of Vitality's journal to see if him and the rest of the exploiters are actually worth trusting. I'm about to find out the truth. I'm about to find out literally everything that's been hidden from me. I'm genuinely scared of what I'm gonna see. I want to believe that Vitality has the right idea, but I mean, there's no way of knowing unless I read this book, so... Oh? The Chosen... And the second layer is on. Oh my god, they're there! They're in the room! Wait, they found it! What? What the hell? What the f- What the f*** is going on? Why are you here? Okay, first of all, how- Why the hell are you at your old base? What are you I can ask you the same question! What the f- Wait, what the f- Good reason why we're at your old base. So we said 15 minutes ago! What?! What is it? What? Wait! Zam, 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 Zam. We read the what book. What the hell? We read the book. We found the book and we read it, alright? Yeah, I came here we for the book. Saw. I was gonna read we the know. full thing. Zam, it ends at page three. Zam, it ends at page three. Really? It doesn't even tell you about phase three. It doesn't even you know tell you the he lied to you in the book. He's lying to you. 100%. He said that he made a bedrock farm in the end? Look at this chest. Does that look like a bedrock farm? Does this look like a bedrock farm in these chests? What? How did you guys find this? What? Wait, what? Just this is have... this is everything, Zam. This is we found it. Can't take anything, guys. This is. Did you this guys just find this now too? Yes, just like 15 like, minutes ago. Like, what the, the hell is the timing the way, of this? How the f are you here? I know the wormhole. Vitality is not who he says he is at all. This entire time, Vitality was lying to me. Everything that had been revealed to me, the truth that he decided to trust me with, all of it was nothing but fabrication to string me along. There was no bedrock farm. Whenever I went to the end, I could never find anything like that, and this was why. But this wasn't the only lie in Vitalis's journal. He claimed that he wanted to find an exploit that would bring balance to the server. But these items were the exact opposite of that. I mean, one-shot swords and potions with every positive effect don't exactly spell out peace and balance. This room was filled with exploits, everything that I hated about this server. And to think that this entire time, my teammates kept this from me. After all the sacrifices I've made for them, the hearts that I've lost trying to protect them, them, the amount of gear I grinded to keep them safe, just for them to have infinite power right behind their bedrooms. This vault proved to me that without a doubt, my teammates were trying to end this world. Since nobody would go so far to bring items like these onto a server where they wanted to make peace. So in that vault, well filled to the brim with rage, I made a decision. I was going to leave the Eclipse Federation and rid this server of exploits once and for all. The next day, I had a meeting with my teammates. I was going to confront them about everything besides the vault, as I didn't want them to know I found it. I questioned Vitality about the exploit, but every single answer he'd give me was unbelievably vague. I questioned him about the bedrock farm not existing, to which he would claim was something that he already revealed to me. This was a blatant lie and made me furious. And at this point, all of the emotions I've been keeping hidden finally bubbled up to the surface. I was going to tell Vitality exactly how I felt, and I wasn't going to hold anything back. I've come to a conclusion, really. If we're gonna keep using exploits, I don't want to be on this team. I'd be willing to work it out, but I don't think Vitalis is willing to change, so... I, I just said I was willing to 
I mean, you can say it all you want. I don't think, I don't think you actually care about my opinion, Vitality. Because when I told you that I didn't want to build this prison, you ignored me. Essentially ignored me. You changed it a little bit. But the fact of the matter is, you still used the bedrock. You told me you wanted me to, you know, hold you back or whatever. Or like, stop you from going too far. But when I told you that you were going too far, you just, you didn't listen. I did listen. I had a five-step plan I scheduled from the beginning of the server and I ended it all because of what you said. Did you though? Because the prison still exists, man. But for a completely different purpose without 90% of the blocks that it was originally gonna have. I've repurposed it. It's for the entire server now and I thought we agreed on that. It doesn't matter what the prison is for. The fact of the matter is, is that it uses bedrock and that's exploits oh, and I don't, just, I don't, I don't appreciate that vitality at all. I don't appreciate that at all. Oh. Damn, did you just see that? I'm sorry, Vitalcy. I'm sorry. There's no it's way you can try. It's clear to me that you're not willing to change Vitalcy. I know you said you would, but I just I think it's another lie. I just think it's another lie. You lied to me a lot. You know what you're lying about too. What did we ever do to you? I felt terrible about what I had just done. These players took me in when I had nobody left. It was cruel and twisted of me to do something like this, but at the same time, I felt that exact same way about what they did to me. All the secrets they kept from me, all the lies they told me straight to my face. Even when I was led to believe I was getting the truth, I was lied to. And since subs and vitality couldn't see what was wrong with that, I believed I made the right choice. After successfully killing Vitalacy, I decided to leave the area and meet up with my new teammates, Bacon Waffles, Planet Lord, and Yaj Aaron. The four of us shared the same belief that exploits were ruining the server, and therefore wanted to do everything we could to get rid of them. So to accomplish this, we started a team known as the Solar Union, and together, we were going to use any means necessary to destroy all exploits. The first step in our plan was for us to kill Vitalacy. My teammates and I figured that if I betrayed him the way that I did, he'd end up being really upset about it and using exploits to get revenge on. Us. And since none of us could really fight back against him since he was immortal and stuff, the rest of the players on the server would more than likely see him as a villain, helping us a ton with the next step of our plan, uniting the entire server against the exploiters. Now, this would hopefully lead to the exploiters realizing the error in their way and getting rid of the exploits altogether by themselves, which had a very low likelihood of happening, but it was the only option me and my teammates had since we couldn't exactly fight our way out of this or anything. So my teammates and I set out to recruit players to our side. Starting off with a meeting to recruit the player, Pangy, which ended up going perfectly until Mapic logged on and, for whatever reason, asked us to follow him to a meeting between him and Spoke. So naturally, to find out more, I decided to go invis and follow him. And after watching for a bit and nothing really happening, my teammates ended up running out of invis and decided to leave the area. And that's when suddenly Spoke splashed Mapic with a potion and then immediately started critting him out. So I decided to pearl in with the hopes of saving Mapic from whatever was about to happen to him. knowing that it was probably going to be futile since Spoke can just one-shot him. However, according to Mapic, I had just managed to save his life since Spoke had immediately started to run away as soon as I pearled in. As this was all unfolding, I was unbelievably confused as to what I had just gotten into. Mapic and I are supposed to be each other's biggest enemies, but now I'm suddenly his lifesaver? This whole thing felt unbelievably staged, like it was some kind of big trap so that Mapic could earn my trust. So before my teammates and I got on a call with Mapic, I made sure to tell them that they should be unbelievably wary of everything he says. And after getting in call with him, he began thanking me repeatedly, which again, was unbelievably suspicious, and then went on to say like nothing of value. He's weird, bro. He's a weirdo. He messaged me for like 30 minutes to join and that he had to tell me something. And then he just he just said, do you want a 1v1? I was like, sure. He said, you know, this, this shield, you should use it. It symbolizes like the beginning of the wormhole uh... or something. And that was literally all he said about what just happened. Yeah, blah, 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 buddy. I'm not trusting you. After this, Mapic was told by Spoke to go to a certain location, and he told us that he was too scared to go alone and wanted us to come with him. So, my teammates and I went invis again and followed Mapic to yet another meeting with Spoke, this time in the nether. Now, real quick, I'd just like to give some attention to the fact that this was unbelievably suspicious. Anyways, we got to the location and stumbled upon a book titled The Wormhole. You're lucky they saved you. Everything is a lie. What does that mean? So, he's saying, you're lucky we saved Mapic. Yeah. Yeah. Why does this seem <laughs> You like think Invis makes oh, you safe? That's awkward. He's up there. Wait, he's up there. Yo, what is Bo doing? Uh, is he floating? Oh. 
Oh my. Uh, apparently, Spoke told Mapix specifically to come alone. So the fact that Spoke was here and had effects on meant there was a really good chance we were probably going to die here. But what's the deal, guys? I was having, I was chatting with Mapix and all of a sudden, like, everyone just pulls up, just starts critting me out. Like, what's the deal, you, guys? You tried killing him, I think. Dude, I don't we know. were just, we were just dueling. We're having, like, a friendly 1v1, you know? It's not that deep. That's what I thought, too, until you whipped out Some something that made me inconsiderably weak. Week. Why are you exploiting? I'm yeah. exploiting? It's not really Does this look like exploits or just really good items? I don't know, I don't man. Know. Yeah, Exploit. this doesn't. This seems What's like What's stopping exploits. you guys from getting these items? Is it really the grind or is it the. Was it the mindset? Was it the mindset? I don't think any of you guys were there when No Pants PP was created. Like, you didn't need stacks of Chance Golden and Apples. Like, you didn't need that to thrive. All you needed was the mindset. The mindset. It seemed as if Spoke somehow knew that we found Vitality's vault, which was terrifying since there's absolutely no way he should know that. And if Spoke somehow did actually know we found the vault, then that means our only advantage against the exploiters was gone, just like that. However, in this moment, I couldn't be too concerned concerned about that since the chances of us leaving here alive were only getting slimmer by the minute i want you to punch me may pick punch may you pick. Are you sure? Yeah. Or the fist right now, punch me. A fist right now? I think we all know what's gonna happen, right? Nathan, stop. What are you what are you gonna gain from this? What do you gain from this, dog? I wanna see. Uh, oh my god, okay. Yep, oh don't, my do god. That. Okay. don't do that, don't do okay. that, okay. don't do that. Okay. Maybe oh, okay. <laughs> punching it. Why are you continuing to punch him? Let's get a totem count, alright? Let's see, let's see. So alright, line up. How many totems do we got? Planet, you first. How many totems do you got? So you have one, oh my god. two. How many? All right, so then three. Stop, stop, All right. Stop, stop. How many? How many do we have in total? Zero. All right, it's a Prince Sam. How many times do we got? We got one. Just the one. All right, let's Why line up. This. Panky, how many times do we got? Two. Uh, all right, follow me. Why? All right, all right, all right. Why line up, you just kill us? I don't get it. Line no, 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 maybe, maybe, Wait, wait, let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Maybe. Sure, line up on the other side. No, let's Thank not. You. Okay. Okay, I'm kidding. It's a prank. 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 Oh my god! Mapic dying here was definitely unexpected, especially considering the fact that out of everyone here, he was the most likely to be secretly working with Spoke. But then again, that's exactly what they do to get us to trust Mapic. I couldn't tell if I was being overly paranoid or if my views on Mapic were clouding my judgment, but I knew for a fact that I didn't want to give him an ounce of my trust. He's been unbelievably suspicious and is way too close to Spoke. This whole situation was really scary. I wasn't sure who I could trust since anybody could be a mole. Even my closest teammates couldn't be trusted since Spoke might know we found the vault, something only my teammates and I know about. And as if all that wasn't enough, there was also Spoke himself. This guy was terrifying, and that was something everyone in the VC could agree on. However, we also knew not to be too scared of him since if he really wanted us dead, we'd have all been dead a long time ago. He needs puppets to play with, you know? Exactly. If he breaks all his toys, you know, like... <laughs> yeah, I'll have nothing left. And with that sentiment, I felt a little more secure about my position on the server, but I also didn't want to be nothing but a toy. I have big goals. I want to get rid of every single exploit, but I can't make any changes to the server if I'm nothing but a toy in someone else's game. So, to further pursue my goal, I gathered my teammates together and we began discussing what our next move should be. We came to the conclusion that, before anything else, we needed to check on Vitality's vault again. If Spoke somehow did know that we found it, he was more than likely going to destroy it. However, when we got there, before we could even enter the vault, I told you I had with us guys. We look stop, around. Stop, no, stop, no, stop, stop it, Jaren. Jaren, 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 we're Jared. so no, 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 no. no. Okay. okay, let's just do this. Let's get through this quickly. Okay, now we're on a double time. Oh, the barrel's empty. It's empty? What? It's empty. The barrel's empty. Oh no. The barrel's empty. Oh, because he died! Oh. Because we killed him! Wait, so we respawned here. Hey, wait, this is actually and... a spawn. Okay, okay, wait, keep digging, keep digging. What, what happened? What? What? What, 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 what are you seeing? What are you seeing? No! No! Oh my god. It's destroyed! No! It's all destroyed. We spent the next bit of time theorizing why the vault was destroyed, as well as why it even existed in the first place. Because everything inside of the vault was in perfect stacks and completely untouched, we believed that this was some kind of test or a trap. However, before we could reach a solid conclusion, Spoke decided decided to show up. But this time, instead of being scared of him, we decided to ask him as many questions as we could. And despite being reluctant at first, eventually
eventually he revealed to us that he blew up the vault simply because he had a vendetta against Vitalicy. He had no idea that we ended up finding it and was honestly pretty happy to see us here. He decided to take us back to spawn using one of his death potions and after hanging out with him for a bit- Oh! Ah, it's my ah, <laughs> Vitalicy just logged on for the first time since my betrayal. And despite everybody in the call telling me not to freak out, I was still freaking out. I could tell Vitalicy was still mad about the betrayal. Because on the day that it happened, he unadded me on Discord. Those kind of feelings don't go away within a few days. But despite this, my teammates still wanted to talk to him. But when he arrived at spawn, for the first time ever, he had the effects on. So I knew right off the bat, this is about to go terribly. So, hey Sam. Hey man. What a get the camera bacon. How's it going? <laughs> okay. It feels like there's some tension between you guys that um, I'm just sensing it. Like I'm like Okay man, okay. Oh. That's awesome. Good no show to raise Please. Oh, you're so Anchored. Vitalicy was clearly off the rails. I mean, walking around with the potion effects, giving out totems like they're nothing, the Vitalicy that I was teamed with would never do this. For a moment, I felt bad. I knew that this behavior was a direct result of my betrayal, but at the same time, everything that happened was simply a result of his actions. He chose to bring exploited items onto the server. He also chose to share those items with the most dangerous player he could. And because of that, I couldn't let myself feel bad for him. I spent the next hour talking with Vitalicy with my teammates. We wanted to explain all the negative effects that the exploits were having on the server in hopes of getting him to stop using them as well as maybe even help us get rid of them. However, despite us talking for about an hour, Vitalicy never wanted to agree with us on anything. He strongly believed that as long as he was the person in charge of the exploits, they would never get out of hand or be used for anything negative. And no matter how many times we brought up negative events caused entirely by exploits, he still just wouldn't listen to reason. The conversation ended up going in circles, so we decided to just leave it. Despite all the reasoning we gave, as well as the few players we recruited to be against Vitalicy, it just wasn't enough. He didn't care and couldn't be communicated with, so we needed to come up with a new plan. Something that could get rid of the exploits once and for all, without having to reason with Vitalicy. Luckily, one of the players we recruited, Pangi, had an idea that I believed could work. The plan was fairly simple. It involved hosting an event where all of the exploiters would compete against one another in hopes of proving themselves as the best exploiter. But during one of the games disguised as a dropper, we were going to trap the exploiters with a void hole and then cover up the hole with bedrock. Now, the only way for this to work perfectly is if the exploiters had a way to give themselves levitation. But in the worst case scenario where none of them end up using it, we still get to kill three exploiters, which to Pangi and I was enough to make this worth doing. So for the next few days, we constructed a bunch of mini games for the exploiters to compete in. And after finishing everything, all we needed now was the bedrock. But to actually obtain it, Pangi and I needed to pull off a devious little scheme. And it all started with this guy. His name is Ash, and he's also one of the exploiters, but he also just doesn't care about anything that's going on on the server. And because of that fact, Pangi and I were going to take advantage of him. Starting off by asking him to judge a building competition between Pangi and I. Hi Ashwag. Do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna oh. do you wanna the, the referee oh. our build cup <laughs> oh. what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so every build competition needs to have a twist because otherwise kids won't click on it. Today we'll what? have a bedrock build competition. What? Hey Zami, there's only <laughs> one problem. <laughs> hey Pangy, hey man. I don't have bedrock, do you? I don't have any bedrock, Pangy. I don't have any bedrock. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Hey oh, Ashi. I dude I what happened tomorrow? This is for our kids' channel, dude. Uh, go, go <laughs> and just like that, we managed to get our grubby little hands on bedrock. As for the building competition, we literally made everything out of obsidian and then sprinkled a few bedrock blocks in, to which Ash was a little suspicious of, but he also just didn't care enough to do anything. So now with everything complete, it was finally time for us to host the event. However, on the day we planned on hosting our event, Vitalicy decided to call a meeting, where every player on the server was invited to spawn so that he could announce some 
something massive. And because Pangy and I had no idea what this could be, we decided to just postpone the event and hope whatever happens doesn't end too badly for us. Now, I'm not gonna lie, at first glance, I thought this meeting was going to be the end of the world. I strongly believed whatever Vitality was about to tell us was going to lead us straight to some kind of apocalypse. But in actuality, it ended up being the exact opposite, as Vitality gathered us all here so that he could denounce exploits for good. Now, nobody that was at the meeting wanted to believe him whatsoever, but his claims were immediately backed up by Spoke, who also claimed that he was done using exploits. And as anticlimactic as it was, none of us could do anything but just accept that the exploits were gone. Vitalcy even took it a step further by banning himself, meaning this was truly how it ended, with the exploits just disappearing overnight. I had to betray my closest teammates, fight against players with infinite power, and endure everything else that the server threw at me, just for none of it to matter in the end. This hurt me a lot, so I decided to cancel everything that I was doing. I gave up on the event that Pangy and I had built, and I left my team, the Solar Union, as well. With the exploiters gone, there was nothing for any of us to do. And even if they did come back, I wouldn't want to fight them anyway, since it'd probably just end up being a waste of my time again. From this point onward, the server became empty. Nobody would do anything when they logged on. I spent this time working on a garden, a nice little farm that could keep me entertained until the server inevitably ended. For the first time ever on this server, I was finally at peace. I didn't have to worry about any kind of conflict. I could just do whatever I wanted without anyone bothering me. At long last, I was finally free. But eventually, I got a visit from Pangy, who was planning to use our competition from earlier to trap Spoke and Ashwag in Bedrock forever, regardless of the fact that they weren't even exploiting anymore. But even if they were exploiting, I didn't want to get wrapped up in any of this. I was enjoying my new lifestyle. I liked farming crops just to trade them for golden carrots. I liked not having to worry about someone killing me 24-7. It was all unbelievably simple and quaint, and I wasn't gonna throw it away just for some silly trap. So no matter how how many times Pangy asked for my help, I turned him down every single time. But that was until Pangy came to me with a different offer. He asked me if I wanted to go on a tour of the server with him, to which I accepted. For the next few hours, the two of us would travel across the server, eventually ending up at the competition we built, which was where Pangy decided to ask me a very interesting question. Zam, could I potentially throw you in the void to see how it would have gone? Sure, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I don't mind. Zam, are you ready to go? I am ready. All right. Sam in three, two, one. I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I'm dropping. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Oh my god. Oh, where do I go now? Oh! Yeah, I patched it up, Sam. I didn't know you patched it up. What the hell? Sam, you see, I never got to do this, you know, and I, I was really sad. And not only that, you again left me. The tenth time it could have been. You left me in the dark again, Sam. I have been waiting the past hour and a half to do this. I have some more bedrock. <laughs> Everyone has their ending. And I think this will be my ending, Sam. I'm gonna lock you up in your own trap. <sighs> Goodbye, Sam. Pangy had left me all alone in a bedrock box. Despite how much he tried to be there for me during these past few days, I hadn't done a single thing to repay the favor. This was the third time that I ended up hurting the people I was closest to. It started with Mapic and Rochambeau when I betrayed them in the dupe war, then once again when I betrayed Subs and Vitality just a few days ago. And now, it had just happened again with Pangy, somebody who I couldn't always see eye to eye with, but whenever I did, he'd make sure to be there for me no matter what. And once again, I unfortunately couldn't repay that favor. I neglected him. I pushed him away time and time again, all so that I could focus on my own selfish goals. To tell you the truth, I hadn't just been farming these past couple of days. I'd been lamenting over my former teammates, trying to figure out what exactly I could do to fix those damaged friendships. I spent days writing sign after sign, trying to come up with anything that I could do to fix this. Anything that could possibly bring my friends back to me. With Mapic and Rochambeau, enough time had passed to where a simple conversation was more than enough. I invited them to my base, and the three of us were able to have a really nice laugh together. With Spoke, I had managed to do the exact same thing. Despite everything that happened between us the past few months, he held no resentment over it, and was more than happy to be on good terms with me. With the Solar Union, a conversation wasn't even necessary. The three of them knew from day one that my alliance with them was only temporary, and regardless of whatever happened, the four of us would always be friends. This left me with the hard ones. Vitality, who 
banned himself nearly a week ago, and Subs, who's also been missing ever since. The two of them were the players that I hurt the most. They never saw my betrayal coming, and to this day, still don't understand why it happened. And even if I tried explaining that to them, I don't think it would make any of this better. The wound was far too fresh for me to do anything to fix this. It was impossible to repair what we had. And the saddest part about all of this planning was that Pangy wasn't considered for even a second with any of this. Not only did I neglect him for weeks on end, I didn't even consider him one of my closest allies. I never tried to make sure I was on good terms with him. I pushed him away. I neglected him. I practically used him. Taking all of this into consideration, I realized that I was an evil person. I've hurt everybody that I've ever been close with and therefore deserve to be locked in this box forever. But I can't give up yet. Throughout this past year, I have done nothing but give up, and I'm tired of it. When Mapik and Ro wanted to use duped items, I gave up on them, betraying their team and trying to get rid of them myself. I did the exact same thing with Vitality and Subs, assuming they were beyond redemption and just betraying them. And I also just gave up on the Solar Union as well as Pangy. I've done nothing but give up, and I won't let it keep happening. All of these betrayals have caused way too much damage, not only to my friends, but to the server itself. And ever since all of them happened, I've done nothing but worse in those relationships, ruining everything far beyond repair. I have caused too much damage. I do deserve to be trapped in this box. I can never forgive myself and nobody else should either, but that doesn't mean I can just give up. I need to keep moving forward. And in my eyes, there's only one option left for me. One move that could truly repair everything and undo all of the damage I've done. And that is to destroy the entire server, bring about a new world, one free of exploits. And to achieve that, I'll need to kill everyone, potentially banning off every last player and ruining all of my relationships. It's the only way that I could repair everything. The only way I can atone for what I've done. I will save this server from exploits no matter what, and I will do anything to achieve that. Whether it's killing my friends or using exploits myself, I don't care anymore. I will destroy this entire server, as that's what needs to be done in order to save it. The next day, I asked Spoke if he could log on for a meeting. He immediately found out that I was in a bedrock box, and used an illegal potion to get me out. This confirmed my suspicion that, despite what he said a few weeks ago, he was still using exploited items. All I had to do now was just convince him to use those same items to help me destroy the server. However, because of how unpredictable Spoke was, I had to make sure to choose my words very carefully. The two of us traveled to a meeting location that I built a few days prior, and when we got there, our conversation went as followed. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and you, you showed me a lot of your powers, right? I have. I have reason to believe that you're trying to use those powers to destroy the server. You think? What's your goal, Zam? Last time we talked, your goal was to be a farmer. You've clearly changed your mind. What are you truly here for, Zam? I want to end the season. I want to destroy everything and end the season. <sighs> I don't blame you, man. There's another player in this server, actually a couple of players on the server that share similar values. And as a lot of people know, in how many days from now? Uh, seven, a uh, wormhole is going to appear. Now, mm -hmm. you probably heard this term be thrown around by Ash and Vitality, but they're not gonna be here to see it open. What I need is players that have motivation, players that have one dead set goal, and honestly, I just want players that want to end the server because I don't want to end it this season. I want you guys to end it. Now, currently there's one player on the server that knows how to end all of this and stop the wormhole from opening. If that player manages to find the control room of the server, this plan could completely fall apart. The control room? It's the uh, room that allows me to obtain powers like this. What the hell? What do you feel <laughs> right now, Sam? <laughs> Slowness and weakness, what? What do you feel when I do this? What? <laughs> Where are, are you, you just right now? moving me? I'm in the air. Oh my god, oh, what? Come up here. Let me set you right there. Oh! You died? Alright, let me bring you back. Don't what? Worry. Your items are safe, Sam. Your items are safe. Listen, for the longest time, I had nothing. I had no pants, I had no nothing. Maybe a, the occasional dupe, but it doesn't matter anymore. It oh. doesn't matter. It does not matter anymore. I am excited for this week because we're <laughs> going to show the players what true power what? is, Zam. True power, <laughs> Zam. This is the end. This is this is it. Oh what my do god. What you feel right now? What do you feel? I'll be honest, I did not think I would get this far. Oh, but oh that's my. Not it. That's not it, Sam. That's not it. What if we close our eyes? 
Oh, take a what? dive. What did you just do? Where are we right now, Zam? Are we in the end? What? You want to see the barrel that I exported in five months ago? It's this. It's this beautiful barrel. Look I've how beautiful it is, yeah. man. Yeah, you've seen these ones. This mm -hmm. is all of the power of uh, Ashwag, Vitality, all of them gone. Nothing. This Zam is true power. Just like that, I was officially part of Spoke's team to end the server. A team that consisted of Spoke and I, as well as Mapic. This was unbelievably ironic considering we used to be each other's biggest enemies, but now we were going to be each other's closest allies in destroying the server. Over the next seven days, the two of us were going to carry out all of Spoke's tasks, destroying the server as much as we can until a mysterious event known as the Wormhole, which, according to Spoke, will destroy the entire server. So in order to complete my goal, all I have to do now is just make it through these next seven days. And once it's all over, this world will finally be destroyed. When I logged on the next day, Spoke was pasting in Drake. I have no idea how this is gonna help us destroy the server, and to be honest, I was starting to rethink every single life choice I've made so far. However, Spoke immediately followed up by granting me one wish. He said that he'd get me literally anything that I asked for, whether it be a custom weapon or maybe just straight up immortality. And like most Prince Sams would, I decided to wish for infinite dirt. Now you're probably wondering, what could infinite dirt be used for? There's probably some kind of tactical purpose that... While I was just messing about and repairing the server for future evil purposes, I ended up running into my former teammate, Planet Lord. He was a part of the Solar Union, aka the anti-exploiting team. So if he were to see me getting grass from a command block, he most definitely wouldn't be too happy about it. And despite the fact that I want to destroy the entire server and kill everyone, I'd still like to hold on to the relationships that I have. So while Planet Lord was staring me down for about 15 minutes straight, I'd occasionally switch to dirt that I actually acquired just to throw him off a little bit, but clearly that wasn't enough to convince him. He's nodding! He's shaking his head! I was shook to my core. Did he know? Did he find the command block without me realizing it? Questions began running through my head, but eventually he logged off, only for him to log back on shortly afterwards without me realizing it. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, okay. Planet finding the command blocks wasn't the worst thing to happen to me, but after the day was over and I returned to my base, I ended up finding all of the Solar Union flowers gone from my collection. <sighs> that hurts. A lot. <sighs> Clearly, the members of the Solar Union didn't agree with what I was doing. Part of me felt broken. I couldn't comprehend the fact that I couldn't make any of my teams work. Maybe I should have stayed on the Solar Union. Maybe I never should have touched these exploits. But what's done is done, and there's no going back and changing the past. The relationships I have, and whether they're broken or not, don't matter to me anymore. What matters is making sure that I can continue moving forward, continue to strive for a better server. That's what I want for all of my friends, and I'm not afraid of killing anyone who stands in my way. So no matter what, I'm not gonna look behind me. I'm not gonna look back at the past and wonder what could have been. I can never let myself stray from this path. I'm going to continue pushing forward with my goal and stop at absolutely nothing until this server is destroyed. Two days later, it was finally time for my first task. Spoke had taken me to a chest that was full of a thousand spawn eggs for every single mob in the game, and he told me that I need to spawn in as many as I could all around the spawn area. Now, this on its own would be fairly simple and straightforward, but while I was doing this, another group of players were playing with Lucky Blocks, a bunch of command blocks that Spoke placed around spawn that would do all sorts of random things. For example, one of them would generate a random structure around spawn, while another one of them would give you zero attack cooldown down, allowing you to spam click and still do a ton of damage. Despite all of that, I still wasn't too worried about these players, since they really aren't that much of a threat. Instead, I decided to get straight to work and started spawning a ton of frogs and dolphins, filling this river with them and honestly making it look pretty good. I wanted to add a few more land dolphins to the spawn area, but unfortunately, that's when I ran into the lucky block gamers. This kid's on me. Okay. Okay, so this is bad. So I don't have attack speed or pants, but luckily, we have dolphins. <laughs> That's so funny. Just give myself dolphins grace. After a relatively easy escape, I was under attack once again. Damn. After that, I was back to spawning mobs, this time in more obscure areas, allowing me to stay away from danger and get through the mobs I needed to. Woo, close squid. Woo, close squid. Oh, hey. 
Oh, that's not good, actually. So I think they know which one's me, so that's cool. I have not PvP'd in Minecraft for like a while. Goodness me. Oh, what? Okay, so this sucks. <laughs> um, are they hitting each other? Wait, this is awesome. Okay. Woo! Oh my god, dude! I said I'd kill everyone today. This is for Jerry the first, please, and thank you. Come here. Dude, Vortex is re already? Damn. I'm like full sat. What am I doing? It's not a fight, it's self-protection. True, they're trying to kill me. I'm just trying to spawn my glow squids. Okay, it seems like he is. Oh, okay, so Parrot one-shot me. <laughs> okay, so thanks to Spoke's genius planning, I ended up dying and losing a ton of our spawn eggs. Now, this wasn't that big a deal. The biggest issue is that they had a Hyperion, and it's all because Spoke decided to use one of these for a game of tag a week ago. Luckily, Spoke cleared the sword from their inventories, so now all I needed was an E-chest, and I was able to fully regear myself and get right back into the battle. Until my helmet broke. Then I had to run away. Ah! Help! 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 I think like three are dead! Ah! Ah! Oh no! No! No, Smoke! Smoke, I take like three hours I can, I can, I can dodge this. Guys, I have an escape route. I have an escape route. I have an escape route, okay? Don't even worry. Don't even worry. We planned for this. We planned for this. We planned for this. Hey, Zim, how you doing right now? Uh, help. I want to go to the button, but I don't want to lead them to it. Uh, I think you should just go for it anyways. I can change it. Don't worry. Okay, all right, yeah. As long as you got me covered, yeah. Yeah, right when you press it, like, go up here, press it, and, like, tell me right when you press it, all right? I go through a pearl up. Uh, I'm about to press it, I'm about to press it, I'm about to press it. I pressed it. Oh, it... I pressed it. <laughs> and just like that, I escaped. Now, because this is taking so long, Spoke told me I needed to move on to the hostile mobs. So I swapped out my shulkers, made my way back to spawn, and began filling this tower with guardians. Spoke added a command block that when you press it, oh god, they're coming for me. Okay, so this is gonna be not fun actually at all. I, I don't even got fighting materials like that. Come on. Come on, dog. I, I don't even got anything to fight back with. Oh, okay, never mind. Thank you, Spoke. Very cool. Having a great time. I'm just doing me. <laughs> I'm just doing me. <laughs> <laughs> no! Is he flying? Oh, Leo is flying, yeah. Leo, help me. Leo, help me. Leo, help me. Yo, Leo, Leo, if you don't stop swinging that sword at me right now, man, I swear to God, I'm gonna kick your ass, man. I'm, I, got, I, got like, I got like 15 people on me. I'm, a, I'm not clown beers. I can't win this. You know, like, I'm getting my ass beat. I got like, I got like everybody on me. I don't, I don't know. I'm just spawning phantoms. I'm just trying to spawn phantoms. I don't see the issue. I personally don't see the issue. I, I, don't even, I, don't, I personally don't even see the issue. I'm just trying to spawn a couple mobs. Like, I don't even see what's going on. Like, I'm just trying to spawn some endermen. I just got teleported to the end. Um, That's not very good. Because oh, I just placed a shulker down. Oh, I'm spawning a bunch of endermen in the end right now. This is pretty fun. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? Man, I'm having a great time. Bro, this, this is going pretty well. Uh, Spoke, you, might, you might need to get me out of here. I'll be honest. Uh, I don't think I can win this. There's, there's five there's, of them on there's me. There's portals in there. There's portals. There's what a portal. They blocked them off. Uh, the rooms. Okay, I got it. They're not gonna. They're not gonna expect this one. Yo, it's good. Yo, it's good. Yo, it's good. What are they attacking me? What did I do? What did I do? You're already failing me! I birthed you like three seconds ago! Why are you already failing? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't like this anymore! I don't like this anymore! Damn, they found a really Help. good button. Help! They found a Help. really good button. Help! I got five gabs. I got no pants. I'm gonna die. I'm about to pop. I popped. I got the... Uh, I I double popped. My pearl didn't go nowhere. Why didn't my pearl land? Uh, I threw a pearl and it didn't land. I'm kind of f I'm dead. So yeah. After dying for a second time, Spoke decided he was done playing around. It was time for us to unleash the final weapon, the Ender Dragon. Just not in the overworld because we didn't want to destroy spawn yet. Instead, the dragons were coming to the nether. I began placing as many as I could all around the nether roof, and eventually they started flying around in a circle directly at zero zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's real! It's real! A thousand ender dragons is real! Eventually, I took notice of Planet Lord and Yajaren, who were watching us do all of this. And that's when Mapic, who finally decided to log on, suggested that we follow them around and mess with them using the dragon eggs. However, I had something far different in mind for them. This is toxic. <laughs> oh, don't kill them! I mean... What the hell? 
What was the Whoa. point? Whoa! Stone hey. sword. Hey, stay back from him. Let him go. My teammates were shocked that I had done that, but I wasn't. This was who I had become. This was what I signed up for. I had descended from my moral high ground to become an exploiter for this purpose alone. To destroy the entire server and kill everyone. And as I've said many times before, I will stop at nothing to accomplish that. Two days later, Spoke had yet another task for us. He used command blocks to make these boots that were going to corrupt the entire world. The way it worked was very simple. Every single block within a 20 by 20 radius would be turned into its corrupted state. For example, grass would turn into netherrack, water would turn into blue glass, and so on and so forth. All Mapik and I had to do was just run around everywhere except for spawn, and soon, the entire world would be corrupted. After giving us the boots, Spoke had to log out for the day, leaving Mapik and I alone to our task. However, after an hour, I was pulled away by Parrot, one of the players who is now part of the Solar Union, as well as the same player who killed me yesterday. He wanted to have a meeting with me to discuss the state of the server, and when we got there, our conversation went as follows. Why are you doing this? Turning the whole world into netherrack right now. What else am I supposed to do? I don't know, but right now, you're Spoke's puppet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you think that. You're laughing, but it's true. I'm laughing because I don't care. I can be Spokes Puppet if I have to. I don't care what I have to do to destroy the server. As long as in the end, the server is destroyed, I don't care. I'm about to blow your mind. Mm -hmm. Spoke is going to turn on you Sunday night. Spoke is doing this because he believes in the players. He wants the players to succeed. And you know what he said? What did he say? He said, out of me and the three heart trio, as long as none of us are banned on Sunday night, he's going to lead us to the control room. And you know what happens? When we get to the control room, the wormhole closes and the server ends in peace. You're never going to destroy the server because the only person who's letting you do that is not even on your side. Parrot had left me with a lot to think about. The fact that he brought up the control room meant that he definitely knew something. And because Spoke had told me about something similar to this during our first meeting, I felt like there was at least a little bit of truth to this. But the real question was, would Spoke actually willingly give out the location of the control room? Or was that part just a lie so that Parrot could make me doubt myself? To get a clear understanding of everything Parrot told me, I decided to share all of it with Mapic. He told me that Spoke plans on betraying us. If we don't ban Parrot, Jaren, Bacon, or Planet, he's gonna lead them to the control room and let them win. That doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Nothing makes sense, really. We both came to the conclusion that everything Parrot said was just to scare me. And in the end, there isn't really much we can do but trust Spoke and hope the server ends the way we want it to. When I logged on the next day, Mapic was in the middle of a fight with Leowook. I immediately began making my way to spawn, but when I got there, Spoke told me I wasn't allowed to intervene. For whatever reason, both of them were taking turns asking Spoke for things, such as a permanent potion effect, or maybe changing a rule for the fight that benefits them. And Spoke had intentionally given Leowook the upper hand by asking him to make whatever changes he wanted first, meaning there was this short time period between Spoke leaving and joining our call where Leowook would have more buffs than Mapic. I wouldn't be surprised if he's buffing up Leo right now. Well, I feel like we'll have no way of knowing if he's buffed or not. Leoic has been buffed to get some speed. Yep. Okay, <laughs> yeah. On top of this, Mapic had said multiple times that he didn't want to be buffed anymore. He wanted the gimmick to end because it kept giving Leowook the advantage. But unfortunately, Spoke wasn't going to let us have our way. All right, which effect would you prefer to be nerfed? Actually, wait, I'm going to ask Leo. What? Damn. He is playing with our lives. It didn't matter how we felt. As long as Spoke was having fun, that was all that mattered to him. That's the main reason Mapic and I were even a part of this. Why we were carrying out all of these tasks. Spoke could finish all of this completely on his own. He only has us around because we keep him entertained. And this fight was his way of showing us that we were more than replaceable. That rebelling against him would be completely pointless. Despite how much this reinforced everything Parrot told us, there was absolutely nothing we could do. Spoke wasn't on our side. That was the main thing we took away from today. And even though Mapic was still able to kill Leowook, unfortunately, the two of us were still just as trapped as we were before. After the fight was over, Spoke wanted us to get in a call with Leo. The conversation was fine. We were just discussing the fight that just took place. Until Leo ended up telling us this. I think <laughs> your, your resistance was OP as fuck. I had resistance one. He had resistance yeah, one, still, but I, it's, still, it's still, still pretty though. powerful. I don't know why but, you yeah. picked region. When I got region five, that was great. Are you kidding? Yeah, are you <laughs> serious? I had to nerve it. He was invincible for like half that battle. I could tell right away, this is going to make Mavic very upset. Now, me personally, I wasn't too invested in the fight itself. I cared more so about the fact that Spoke was actively working against us. But then, Leo ended up revealing yet another thing. Yeah, Jaren's But you know what, I have this, Mapic? 
You gave, gave him, him one of those? Hey, he asked, he asked politely. Uh, right. Okay. Mippik and I could tell, based on the fight, that we weren't special. But for some reason, seeing it through Leo receiving an item that was meant for just Mapik and I made it hurt way more than it should have. Yeah, this is his way of just proving that we aren't special and that we're just as easily replaceable. So even if we do try to betray him or do anything, we're just, we're not special. He can replace us with anyone. It's honestly just really sad. With the most powerful player on the entire server on my side, I still can't help but feel powerless. Nothing I did mattered. I've been told this time and time again. As a matter of fact, even feeling this way doesn't matter because in the end, this is just Spoke's world and no matter what happens, he's the one who controls everybody. But on the brighter side of things, at least I wasn't alone in feeling this way. With only one day left until the wormhole opened, Mipik and I scrambled for any ideas we could come up with. But unfortunately, none of our options ended up working out. We quickly realized that if Spoke were to turn on us, we'd be practically doomed. So we decided that no matter how tomorrow went, whether Spoke betrayed us or not, we were going to do everything in our power to destroy the entire server. It was one of the few goals we shared and we trusted each other enough to carry it out together. The time for us to open the wormhole had finally come. Spoke, Mapic, and I met up at our base of operations, now joined by Clown Pierce, who apparently has been a part of our operation this entire time. Now this on its own was already a shocking revelation, but then Spoke took everything to another level by revealing the fact that if we wanted to destroy the server, we'd need to ban at least one member of Parrot's team, either Bacon Waffles, Planet Lord, Yeah Jaren, or Parrot himself. If at least one of them was banned by Sunday night, then the server would be destroyed just like how we were promised. Now, the interesting part about all of this was that this was essentially what Parrot ended up telling me during our meeting, just without a few key details that I can only imagine he left out on purpose. Parrot's main point was that by Sunday night, Spoke would end up turning on us and showing them where the control room was. However, what Parrot failed to tell us was that if at least one member of their team was banned before then, this would never end up happening, meaning Spoke would stay on our side and destroy the server. Which, in mine and Mapix's eyes, wasn't any kind of betrayal, it was just Spoke's way of making this a more entertaining event and giving Parrot and his teammates an actual reason to survive and not just ban themselves because it's an impossible fight. This made a lot of sense to me, so I decided to put all of my prior resentment aside and fully trust Spoke throughout the next two days. As for Mapic, him and I decided to devote ourselves to a new goal, killing Planet Lord, Bacon Waffles, Yeah Jaren, or Parrot as many times as we can until eventually they're banned. After making all of our final preparations, it was finally time for the four of us to head to spawn. We got on a call with the rest of the server, and there we finally decided to reveal the wormhole. Alright, who's ready to figure out what the wormhole is? Me, me, I was the wormhole. Did the server just freeze? Yeah, Spoke just crashed it. I, Wait, everyone's frozen. Oh just... my. Whoa. Oh my god, okay, there it is! <laughs> <laughs> With the wormhole now open, dozens of invaders headed to our home base and began getting a ton of gear given out by Clown Pierce. All of them had full maxed out netherite, fighting kits, and 20 hearts. As for Mipic and I, we were buffed with permanent potion effects and could find our enemies anytime we wanted thanks to Spoke giving out their cords. So with an entire army behind us, we began scouring the earth and trying to kill our enemies as many times as we could. Hey, uh, do you have stack totems, Sam? I do, I do. You ready? Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no! Oh, oh, here we go! Oh, oh, oh my man. god! Got him! Got him! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Snook very easily killed Planet, but as I'm sure you could tell, there was a bit of a pressing issue, the server lag, which unfortunately led to Mapic logging out, leaving me by myself to go on a very interesting solo quest. I did all sorts of things that were very, very important, such as getting to meet Spoke's actual dad. <laughs> Hello, sir. Ow. Oh! oh he He's hostile! No. He's hostile! No! No! <laughs> 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 Fighting against Wembu, one of the invaders who betrayed us for some reason. Oh, Wembu's here! Wembu's here! Use one tap items. Oh sh! Oh sh! That's oh, that's hard for me fuck? to fight actually. There's a few items that I would consider a little dangerous. And lastly, ended up in an epic battle. Try that again. I'm You're trying, trying that. Again. It worked. Try that again. It worked. Well, guess what? Well, I've been studying again. your movements. I know how to counter this one. 
What? <laughs> what? Throughout all of this, I also went through like a shulker of armor because it just kept breaking. And I also managed to kill members of Parrot's team a ton, getting them all closer to being banned. However, Parrot for some reason just had 100 hearts lying around and evenly distributed them to all of his teammates. On top of this, there was also a team of invaders that betrayed us, all of which could just give up some of their own hearts at any time they'd like, undoing all of our progress whenever they wanted. It seemed as if our goal of banning them was impossible until I ended up doing this. Yeah, someone's inv is near me. Oh yeah, Plan Lord is near you. Yeah, his second layer is on. There yeah, Plan Lord's right behind you, man. He is trolling you. He's behind you, like directly behind you. He's gonna go up and punch you probably. Yep. Bro, you missed! You okay? I'm on him, I'm on him. He's hiding in grass. One of the tall bushes. Tall, tall grass things. Tall grass things. Um... Got him. Yo, oh Huge. my god. Now, this on its own doesn't seem so important. But after Planet died, Spoke found his bed and covered it in bedrock and barriers. Now, something interesting about Planet is that he loves to play on three hearts. So after this death, he was on two. Now, before he was able to meet up with his teammates and get another heart equipped, he ended up dying yet again to another group of invaders. And with only one heart left, he just logged out for the day. But when Tomorrow ended up rolling around, he logged onto the server to see that Spoke enabled immediate re spawn and that he was now trapped in a bedrock prison on one heart. This was it. My perfect opportunity to end all of this right here, right now. All I had to do was just get to his bed before his teammates and kill him. After that, this can finally all be over. However, when I got there, Planet wasn't even online. I got into a VC with him to figure out what was going on, but as he began to say a whole lot of nothing, I was suddenly ambushed by three players wearing parrot skins. Who's dying? Oh, is that Minitech? Oh, that is Minitech. He's so cool. Dude, star, bro. I'm trying to not die. That's not even us, that's Minute Tech. This place is getting decimated. Oh, I deafened. What? Oh, why did I deafen? Yo, Spoke, I'm hitting you, like, jumped. What uh, are you doing? I need a hand here, guys. I need a hand here. I need a hand here. I'm actually, I'm out of totems. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm out of totems. Okay. After I'd been nuked to death by Planet and his teammates, Clown Pierce, who was defending the bed, was also overpowered, allowing Leowook to glitch into the box and give him more hearts as well as everything he needed to escape, successfully freeing Planet and losing us our opportunity to ban him. Left with an empty inventory and filled to the brim with rage, I once again felt like there was nothing we could do. Yeah, I don't know why. The enemies have like a bunch of, what's it called? Nuke items and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like... Our opposition is actually way stronger than us. I mean, Parrot did say he had like a million billion hearts. Again, no matter how many times we kill them, they're just gonna get more. Yeah, yeah, until I start deleting hearts. Spoke had a plan to make hearts on the server completely useless. For the past couple of hours, him and Parrot had been going back and forth, opting to remove certain items from the server. A few items that were already being infinitely cleared were the Hyperions, Speed Boots, as well as totems that go up to a stack. But this time around, when Spoke asked Parrot what his team would like to remove next, for whatever reason, they ended up choosing nukes, despite just getting a kill on me with them. So in return, Spoke decided to ban hearts, the physical item themselves, meaning if any of our enemies ever tried to withdraw hearts, hearts, or pull their hearts out of their ender chests, they'd instantly get cleared, thus making them completely obsolete, and locking Planet Lord on three hearts unless he kills someone. After this rule change had been made, Mapic decided to log back on, and together we led multiple armies of invaders into battle with our enemies. But after many, many long fights, none of us were able to kill Planet once. So, to speed things up just a little bit, Spoke decided to start closing the world border rapidly, making it far easier to find our enemies. Until they decided to go to the end. Oh, the end right now. They're in, the end. they're in the end. They're in the end. Yo. The end. Okay. Okay. No, that's huge. Oh, I think I see them. Oh yeah, I see them. Spam Ender, Spam Ender Dragons. Ender Dragons. Ender Dragons. Ender Dragons. Oh, they have knockback. They have loose. Yeah, sure, I'm sure, gonna run, run on, on the side. opposite side. Yeah, I'm gonna run on yeah, the yeah, opposite yeah, yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. These are cool and different. They're spawning Ender Dragons as they run. Holy. Wait, what the hell is that? There's an island. There's like a regular island. Okay, this is really bad because I don't want to walk on this. Okay, you're right. I really don't want to walk on this. <laughs> Yo, what is that, bro? Is this the control room? No, idiot. Why is an ender dragon in the way? Oh, bro, you're crazy. Don't, bro. You're, you're so f smart. Guys? 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 Oh my god. It spoke. Guys, guys, guys. He has a, he has a shirt on. That shirt, like, kills everyone. Oh my god. What? <laughs> you did oh, not need to jump on me, dog. He's on the island. He's gonna be on the island. Okay, let's let's try it. Wait, who's behind us? Who's behind us? I'm running towards the red thing. Pearl onto that island. Pearl onto that island. Yeah. Is that he? <laughs> That's he. Yeah. Just dying. Yeah, yeah. It ki it, ki it kills anyone in the radius. All right, squad, move in. Oh, bro. <laughs> Five minutes, guys. <laughs> Where's spoke? No. Spoke on me. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. There's nothing in our EHS. Oh, plan oh, died. Oh my gosh. Okay. Did you get close? Too close to him as well. You got too close to me. Yeah, 200 negative 600. Oh! No! 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 
No! No, I'm on one heart! I'm on one heart! I'm on one heart! Oh, wait, I have a oh, shovel! Wait, 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 wait. Kill me! Kill me! Kill me! Yes! Minitek died. <laughs> Minitek died. Yeah, uh, maybe stay around here. Ask for a heart. No! No! no. Bro, get more hearts. Okay. Unless you kill someone. Hey, guys. There's Maddox down. Hi, Ren. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. What did you do? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Are you in the forest? I don't know. Put a single positive in the forest. No! I asked him if he needed gear and so he would stop running. How's that Go back to a pool, go back to where you get No! Oh! Oh! Evil. When it's gone. He's, he's banned. He's banned. He's gone. Wait, wait so, oh my god. Okay, so this entire time, Planet and his teammates need to be banned before 10 p.m. EST. But in my mind, I thought it was before midnight, thinking we had another two hours, when in fact we only had like another 30 seconds. Luckily, when there was only 11 left, Mavic was able to find and kill Planet, but oh my god, I was just walking around completely oblivious of everything going on. I had no idea we were like 10 seconds away from losing. But regardless, Planet was banned before for Sunday night, meaning that we just won, which for whatever reason was really hard to believe. Do you think we actually won? I think so. I'm so scared. Every time we win a war with Spoke on our side, you know, he does the last minute switch up. Hold on, Spoke says to stand by his side. Uh, okay, where is he? Oh, TPP. Okay, cool. Dude, that feels so weird. It's like done. Oh my God. Yeah, we win essentially dude i can't believe we clutched up like that bro i know 10 seconds can you believe we did it sam wait control the vc is called control room yeah i know i didn't think we'd get this far yet after finishing his private call with parrot spoke added us all to a vc entitled the control room now at first this had me a little suspicious but then i realized this was probably just going to be the vc he used if our enemies were to actually beat us while in the call he teleported all of us to a small island and decided that he'd give one last big speech before ending the server once and for all i really thought you guys had this in the bag because parrot literally grinded up a hundred hearts just to protect you guys but here's the thing planet was on three hearts not because he sucked not because he was bad planet got banned because he stuck by his beliefs literally against up against unlimited power you stayed on three hearts and that is goddamn impressive planet you were banned and technically by the bets rules i can mm -hmm. end the server how i want it to be ended but i think just because you kept something that you believed in i think everybody deserves to take a look at this mysterious control room okay so despite us winning spoke is showing them the control room anyways which is messed up beyond messed up despite all the work that mainly mapic put in we were still just gonna lose despite that 11 second left clutch we're still going to lose the server wasn't going to be destroyed and for what now at first i genuinely believed that spoke was just going to show them the control room for fun but then he took it a step further and ended up doing this this is the final room the final test of the wormhole obviously there's two two holes here one of them will save the server destroy the control room the other one will permanently destroy the server forever just completely corrupt it like completely just utterly dismantle the server. Spoke was making us do a 50-50. After everything we had been through, he was making us do a 50-50. I couldn't believe it. Once again, everything that I've been working towards had been crushed in front of me, all within a single moment. I couldn't take that again. I was crushed, was broken, once again. Voices it, instantly again, began definitely. running through the my head, five, reminding me of just been. how you pathetic and useless again, I was. So. How pointless all of this was. Everything I've been doing was for nothing. What was the point? Why... Why would I do this? Why would I let any of this happen if it was for nothing? Let's stop the coin. Let's stop the coin. Let's stop the coin. We, we're flipping a coin for the fifth. Maypick was right. We could definitely still achieve our goal despite the circumstances. And with Spoke betraying me, it felt really nice to know that Maypick hadn't forgotten, that he still wanted to achieve this goal that we shared. Looking back on it, I think Maypick spent more time as one of my enemies, but for whatever reason, I remember him more as an ally, as if he was kind of always there for me from the very beginning. It felt nice knowing that, even though nobody else on the server will appreciate what I'm doing here, at least one other person feels the exact same way as me. And in the end, when my friend come back to a world without exploits, hopefully that would make this all worth it.